You have to have a level of phosphate in that water for algae to cell divide or to grow. And it doesn't matter what kind of algae we're talking about. It can be green algae like this. This is what it looks like under a microscope. Um, it has to have phosphate. What happens is if you've got a high level of phosphate, you get a little algae spore like this introduced to your water from rain or, or a blowing of the wind or whatever, it eats a phosphate, it makes a baby, that baby eats a phosphate, it makes a baby, and that's how you get an algae bloom. That's how your pool turns green. Same with black algae. This is what it looks like in a pool. If you haven't dealt with this stuff, it's a nightmare. Um, the reason why it's very long and it roots down into the pores of plaster pools into the pits, so it's guarded. But you can't get this if you don't have phosphates in your water. So instead of fighting it with poisons and lots of elbow grease and brushing, just create an environment where it can't grow. Mustard algae as well. This is what it looks like in a pool. It floats. It's really hard to treat. This is what it looks like under a microscope. Um, kind of a funny picture. But... Uh, <laughs> Yep, that's what it looks like. <laughs> that can't grow like that in your pool without phosphates, which is a good thing. Here's a real life example too of how well this stuff works and, and what you guys can have and offer your customers. This was a, a service guy in my hometown that didn't believe a word I was saying eight years ago when I started with the company. I was at a tabletop at a distributor. And I said, we have an algae free guarantee and he was like, please. You know, like, I've been doing this for 35 years. There's no way this stuff will work. And I go, all right, well, I like a challenge. I'll take care of one of your problem pools for you. Um, I, I can do it on the weekend. I'll do it. So this old boy was like, yeah, I've got the perfect scenario set up for you. I have two identical pools right next to each other. They suck. The pumps are undersized. The filters are undersized. They don't have money. They won't buy new stuff. They turn green. They're overused. And there is a soybean field right across the street over here. So it's, you know, I knew that it was being introduced, phosphates were being introduced. So um, I said, great, I'll take one, you take the other. He said, fine. I went to this about every Saturday. I would add chlorine into the rainbow offline feeder, just make sure it had tabs in it. I shocked it once a month. And I added a phosphate remover along with our enzyme, our combo product, Pool Perfect Plus Phosphory. Um, it never turned green once, it never really got cloudy, never did anything, it was just basically perfect. Same bather load as the other property here, you can see there are um, divided but identical pools. This one you can see the, the drain from up on the fourth floor, it was crystal clear. This one, same old problems, it turned green about every four to five weeks, he would have to treat it with expensive polyquad algicide, brush the hell out of it, shock it, use clarifiers, clean it up, boom, three, four, five weeks later it turned green again. When we averaged up everything at the end of the season, we actually saved him 34% in chemicals alone in this pool to this one. 34% savings. That didn't even factor in his labor because he had guys wrenching on this thing all the time. So he's still to this day one of our best service accounts because he puts every single pool on this program here, which is just sanitizer, shock it once a month or so, and use the Pool Perfect Plus Phosphory, and it works every single time. It's guaranteed. <coughs> So this just kind of shows you what you can get in, the, uh, in being proactive rather than reactive. Now again, I mentioned 150 parts per billion. Remember, parts per billion, not parts per million. So if you're under 150 parts per billion, you cannot get algae. And we are the only technology, natural chemistry's phosphate removers are the only ones that can get you down to that level. There's reducers out there that use an older technology called lanthanum chloride. But it's not quite as good for a couple of reasons. A, it clouds the hell out of the pool. All right, and I'll show you exactly how bad it is in just a minute. But it works in the water, not in the filter. So it clouds the pool and it only reduces down. It doesn't remove to zero. All right, it gets it down lower at about 300 or so, but it doesn't get it down to this magic number or lower, which we do. We do get it down to zero. And that's because we have this pot, uh, patented technology, phosphory. So this is a picture of a pool. This is my neighbor's pool, or my boss's pool, excuse me. And you can see eight foot deep end, crystal clear, you can see the main drain there. This is actually us using our product while this picture was taken. We're taking phosphates out of this pool to illustrate that it's crystal clear. Our products don't cloud the water. You can't even tell that you added anything. This is the competitor's product. A couple days later, we loaded the pool back up with phosphates using miracle Grow fertilizer, tested the level, and threw the competitor's stuff in and it got this cloudy. This is an actual play-by-play -play of that cloudiness occurring. Maybe. Maybe. 
be. All right. Technical difficulty, but trust me, it was horrifying. You don't want to do it. It was like that, but we, what we did is we, we took a picture every 20 minutes, or every 20 seconds for four minutes, and you can see the cloud of us adding the product and then it clouding up. But trust me, it clouds. If you use anybody else's phosphate removal but ours, you get a very, very heavy cloud uh, introduced into the pool. And you can just, painting that picture, you can just see it now. <laughs> Horrible. So you don't want to do that, right? You want to, you don't want to screw up a person's pool in order to fix it. You know, if you do that to a service account, they're going to be pissed at you, bottom line. Um, my, my boss's pool was cloudy for about two weeks. He's got an oversized 60 square foot DE filter on it. He had to take that big thing apart a couple of times and clean it out because it was so impacted with stuff. So big pain in his butt. I mean, he instantly, by about the fifth day, he instantly regretted talk, me talking him into using his pool as a guinea pig pool. So don't do that to your customers. There's an easier, better way to do it. Now, I've mentioned testing a couple of times. It really is the key. There's, a, there's multiple different phosphate test kits out there. They're all good. These will test up to 1,000 uh, parts per billion for you. They cost you not much, 15, 20 bucks. Um, or you can use ours. It's free, believe it or not. If you use our products, we supp uh, supply you these free of charge. They cost us 20 bucks. They're made by Lamont. But we're more than willing to uh, provide that for you guys because it validates and sets you all up as professionals for success. So I'm going to actually do a water test right now for you so you can see how it's done. I'll do it in front of this camera here. This is a strip test, okay? There's a strip. There's a hundred in each of the uh, phosphate test kits we provide. There's a hundred of these strips. Up. There's a hundred of these strips provided. This is not a traditional strip where you just dip it in and then look for some sort of reading or reagent. It doesn't work quite like that. What you want to do is actually fold this strip over and stick it in the lid much like a horseshoe, all right? The reason we do that is because it's easy to get out. You snap the lid back on after filling up your vial to the top with tap water, or sort of the sample water, and you simply invert five times. Now there's a little bubble you see that acts as a counter because every time it makes a run, it's one second. And it actually acts as an agitator to make sure the reagents on that strip are delivered. So after you do it five times, total of 10 seconds, you take the lid off, throw your strip away, that part's done. Now, if there's phosphates present, the sample water turns blue. And what you do is you look straight down the top and compare it to this comparative chart on the side of this bottle right here. So you look down it and you determine what it is. And believe it or not, you guys are off the charts out of the tap right now. It's over 1,000 parts per billion. Algae needs 150 or higher to grow, so you guys are in the danger zone right off the jump. It makes you thirsty, doesn't it? <laughs> it won't hurt you. It won't hurt you. But it will definitely contribute to algae blooms. If you started a pool with a generator, you would probably have some issues or it would not work as efficiently as it should right off the jump, right out of the tap. So just be aware of that. You know, just be aware of what you're putting in the pool because if there's phosphates present, they, they will cause problems. Um, now, more good news. Say it's 600, 700 parts per billion, whatever. The, the number's arbitrary. What if you're out in the field and go, I can't remember what that guy said, what's high, what's low. We tell you right here on the, on, the, on the box, on the test, exactly which of the products to use to remove that number of phosphates. So all your answers are right here. This is 1,000. You go, okay, what do I use? I use the phosphory, this much per 10,000 10, gallons. It's all right here. So we make it really, really easy for you all to combat these problems. But again, test. If you need them, we have them. Call Jamie. Um, call the 800 number actually on our test kit or on all of our bottles. You'll get a human being that answers the phone. They speak English, which is good, and they'll be able to help you. Um, they are in Canada, so speak slowly. Okay. We have two corporate offices. One's in New York, one's in Canada. Obviously, we chose the Canadians to handle the customer service because they're a little nicer bunch of people. Jamie's a native New Yorker. I rest my case. But uh, no, if you have any questions at all too, you can call and they will help you. And if they can't answer your question immediately, they'll put you in, in contact with someone who can. So instantly in the field, you have that kind of service, which we're proud of that. You know, I mean, not a lot of companies 
will sit there and, and, and offer that and promise that. Jamie used to work for Zodiac. What was the hold time like for customer service? I still get calls about like an hour, hour and a half in the middle of the season. Yeah, we don't have that. You know, it's if you have a question or an issue or anything at all, call us and we'll fix it for you. Foundation. Hey, Chris. Yeah. Um, my favorite question: mm -hmm. Can you talk about um, testing for phosphates with live algae? Oh yeah. Okay. If you have a green pool, it's really tempting to test for phosphates just to see how high the level is. It's probably going to be zero. The reason is, is that phosphate that we're testing for that's going to make this sample turn blue has actually been absorbed already and it's hidden inside the living green plant. So what happens is, and just be aware of this, if the pool is green, you have to kill that algae and get it from green to cloudy. And what happens is that plant is now dead and it releases that phosphate where now it can be tested. So if you've got a green pool, it's not really effective to add a phosphate remover. You want to make sure you kill it first and then proceed with removing the food source. That's what happens. A lot of times you get a green pool, you shock it, you brush it, you use an algicide, whatever you do. You can clear it up, you kill it, it goes cloudy, you use clarifiers or whatever, or even some of our products to break down that dead plant mass. But then, three, four weeks later, it turns green again because that phosphate's been re-released and it's just there waiting for the right environment. Algae spore gets in, and then you have an algae. So make sure that the, the algae is not actively living, it's not visible in the pool, to ensure that you get the most accurate test reading. Um, any questions on phosphates before we just cover a few new products and then we'll get you on your way? Well, yeah, it wasn't quite clear there. I, I walk up to a cloudy pool. Yeah, cloudy pool. And, and I know they're using fertilizer, mm -hmm. burying the trees. What's my first step if I don't just... Well, if it's just cloudy, the, uh, just test well, it for... I'm sorry, I'm a green pool. Green pool, okay. Yeah. Kill the green. Kill the green. Just shock the shit out of it. Sure. I, that's my attack. Okay. So you can use the algaecides, but they can be spendy sometimes. Yeah, so I've, I I, I've never I've never honestly seen an algae that it couldn't be killed without with ample chlorine. So <laughs> shock it as soon as it goes from green to cloudy. You know that the living plant is dead now, and then we can ex assess how what level the, the phosphate is. Now the good news is, is once you get that level down with that initial dose, it's very easy to maintain it at zero, and that way you can start onto the algae-free guarantee. So the chlorine level can still be real high. Yeah. Oh yeah. This stuff isn't affected by chlorine. Yep. Yeah, this is not affected by chlorine whatsoever. So give it 24 hours and then... I love it. Yep. Okay. Just make sure it's, it goes from green to cloudy, and then clean it up like you normally would. But just know, hey, here's the reason it was green. We're going to get this stuff out of here. And then on a weekly basis, you can add a very inexpensive, less than an algicide. It is less money per dose than an algicide, and it's guaranteed to work because once you get that phosphate level down, it's real easy to maintain it with a weekly dose of phosphory or pool porter plus phosphory. Yep, no problem. That's what it's all about. Take the food source away. You're creating an environment where algae cannot grow. It's just that simple. You're creating a habitat where the plant can't thrive. Again, it's guaranteed. Um, do you have issues with scale here much at all? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, good. Well, there's a lot of stuff out there that, that claims to, to prevent scale or to make it go away. Um, it's still a problem though. And again, a lot of these products are actually phosphate based. Some work better than others. Some are okay. 